Namo Bhutthaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 34. Uh, the title of the discourse is Shorter Discourse on the Cowherd. Now, this discourse is about uh, the, you know, uh, ascetic or a Brahman or a, you know, who, who you should follow as a teacher, right? Because there are several people, some have the right understanding, some don't have the right understanding, right? So, now, this discourse is in my view, this discourse is on the teacher, uh, whom, which teacher you should follow. The cowherd reference is also there in the middle discourse 33. But there the discourse was more towards as a as a uh, spiritual seeker what qualities you should have. But here the reference to the cowherd in my view, in my little understanding, it's it's basically on the, you know, the, uh, the kind of a teacher that whether you should follow that particular teacher or not. Right? So, what basically it says is that Buddha was staying in the land of Vajis near Ukla on the banks of Ganga river. Then Buddha addressed the mendicants. So mendicants, Buddha said, once there was an unintelligent Magadhan cowherd in the last month of the rainy season, without inspecting the near shore and the far shore, he drove his cattle across the place with no ford. No ford is that in a river there is always a shallow place where shallow water is there. So then the cattle can be passed through that particular uh, area so that cattle will not drown. So that particular in unintelligent cow herd, what he did was that he drove the cattle across that place with no ford on the Ganges river. And because of that, the cattle died, right? The cattle came to a ruin. So Buddha said, why the cattle came to a ruin? Because the unintelligent cow herd failed to inspect the shows before driving the cattle across at a place with no ford. In the same way, there are ascetics and Brahmins who are unskilled in the world and the other world, unskilled in Mara's domain and its opposite, and unskilled in death's domain and its opposite. If anyone thinks they are worth listening to and trusting, it will be for their lasting harm. That means if anyone follows such kind of teachers or something, it will be for their lasting suffering. And then Buddha gives the example of an intelligent cowherd. So the intelligent cowherd, what he did, he inspected the near and far shore, he drove the cattle across the ford on the Ganges river to the northern shore. First, he drove the bulls, fathers and leaders. So, he did not take the entire cattle with him at once. First, he drove the bulls, fathers and leaders of the herd. right? And then they crossed to the other shore. Then he drove the strong cattle. right? They also crossed over. Then he drove the bullocks and heifers. They also then crossed. right? And then calves and the weak cattle. They also uh, uh, made their way to the far shore. Then a baby calf has been just been born and he also then was able to be taken to the uh, uh, far shore. So here basically Buddha is, is explaining that that intelligent cow what he did this first step by step way he moved that first he took the the most kind of uh, powerful uh, the leaders of the herd he took those, that those to the other shore and one by one he did that. Actually these various uh, types of the herd are actually uh, representing the uh, uh, the various uh, I will say uh, the the people at the various stages of awakening, right? So the followers, the so Buddha students also are at various stages of awakening. So the most powerful, the bulls, fathers, and leaders are basically the people who have the capabilities of being arhans at the fastest. So they are first made arhans. Then so there are various stages of awakening. So starts with stream entry which is the first level then uh, once returner then a non returner and then the arhan right so so that uh, is actually getting reflected in this how that intelligent cowherd uh, moved the cattle from one stop one uh, from one show to another show there is another video i have made on the various stages of awakening that you can check so you will get a better idea on the various levels of awakening that uh, is uh, explained by the buddha so Buddha says, in the same way, there are ascetics and Brahmins who are skilled in this world and the other world, skilled in Mara's domain and the opposite, and skilled in death's domain and its opposite. If anyone thinks they are worth listening to and trusting, it will be for their lasting welfare and happiness. Right? So it's basically how how you should choose your teacher. Choose choose your teacher wisely because if you choose your teacher not, you know, uh, who is not good, not skilled, then it can be for your lasting harm. As against a teacher who is skilled, who knows you know, the whole thing and then it will not be for the lasting harm. So, my understanding here is that, see, uh, all
always go as per your faith, as per what uh, what you resonate, right? So, uh, what my experience has been, and I've been in the uh, my spiritual journey since two thousand five, which is like around maybe I think uh, what uh, two thousand five is like fifteen, eighteen years now, eighteen, nineteen years that I've been. But when I came to Buddha's knowledge, and it's like. Uh, I realize that this knowledge is like, you know, it's just cut above the rest. You know, the knowledge, especially of the dependent origination that Buddha has given, right? It just clarified everything for me. And you know, what I just like, I'm just being frank here that this knowledge is liberating knowledge. This knowledge will not, it's not designed to keep you in the world. That's why Buddha's knowledge is not popular, right? Because how many people are there who want to get free? From this samsara, everyone says they want to get free, but everyone still wants to remain stuck. You know, they they we have an Indian sweet called gulab jamun, right? So it's like you go into a party, uh, uh, a marriage, a wedding, and there are gulab jamuns, and you have diabetes, and you still want it's a sweet meat in India, uh, gulab jamun. So, but you still have that you want to have that gulab jamun. So we are like that. We are all like that. But Buddha's knowledge is like the ultimate. It will free you. And how many of us are ready to be free? So we have to have uh, first check how much we resonate, and once we have come on the Buddha's path, then you know don't go, don't look here and there. Just follow the path what he has given the noble eightfold path. Just look at the impermanence of all things. Just do our meditation daily. Be mindful in our speech, in our thoughts, in our actions, right? And uh, once we have like a you know a cowherd, an intelligent cowherd. He will ensure that you know uh, we are moved from one show to another. That is from the samsara to nibbana, right? So we have to just trust, have faith in the teaching, go, go, and devote ourselves to the teaching. And we are very lucky to have Buddha as our teacher, right? So this is my small kind of reflection from this. It's a short discourse, a one-page discourse. Uh, do read this discourse at your end also. The link to the entire discourse is given the in the description, uh, and do share your thoughts and insights and reflections on this discourse. Uh, I hope this video is useful to you in some way. Uh, thank you so much. Namo Buddha.